When his feet grew tired and weary, he would curl up in the woods and weeds and rest. Water from a rain puddle or a mountain stream would quench his thirst and cool his hot, dry throat. Food found along the highway or the offerings from her friendly hand would ease the pangs of hunger. Through the rains, the snows, and the desert heat, he would jog along, never looking back. Some mornings, he would be found curled up in front of the porch. The long journey would be over. He would go home. There would be a lot of tail wagging and a few whimpering cries. His warm, moist tongue would caress the hand of his master. All would be forgiven. Once again, the lights would shine in his dog's world. His heart would be happy. After my friend had disappeared in the darkness, I stood and stared at the empty alley. A strange feeling came over me at first. At first, I thought it was lonely or sad, but I realized that wasn't it at all. The feeling was a wonderful one. Although the old hound had no way of knowing it, he had stirred memories of what priceless treasures there were. Memories of my boyhood days in old KC, baking powder can, and two little red hounds. Memories of a wonderful love, unselfish devotion, and death in the saddest form. So isn't it crazy how that one dog in a moment has brought back him so many memories of his life when he was a kid? It's crazy. As I turned to enter my yard, I stared to lock the gate. Started to lock the gate. And then I thought, no, I'll leave it open. He might come back. So do you think deep down he wanted him to come back? Yes. Yeah. For sure, 100%. I was about halfway to the house when a cool breeze drifted down from the rugged Tetons. It had a bite in it and a goose pimples jumped out of my skin. I stopped on at the woodshed and picked up several sticks of wood. I didn't turn on any lights or entering the house. The dark, quiet atmosphere was a perfect setting for the mood I was in. I built a fire in the fireplace and pulled up my favorite rocker. As I sat there in the silence, the fire grew lar larger. It crackled and popped. Firelight shadows began to shimmer and dance around the room, and the warm, comfortable heat felt good. I struck a match and light my, to light my pipe. As I did, two beautiful cups gleamed from the mantle. I had the, held the match up so I could get a better look. There they were, sitting side by side, one with large, with a long, upright handles that stood out like wings on a morning dove. The highly polished surface gleamed and glistened with a golden sheen. The other was smaller and made of silver. It was neat and trim and sparkled like a white star in the heavens. I got up and took them down. There was a story in those cups, a story that went back more than half a century. As I caressed the smooth surfaces, my mind drifted back through the years, back to my boyhood days. How wonderful the memories were. Piece by piece, the story unfolded. So it sounds like maybe there's some stuff in his childhood that he didn't deal with maybe and this is really helping him bring that out and relive it so i'm very curious to see what happens so you did really good with the comprehension and you can tell like the guy wants his dog so what do you think that's going to happen with the dog i think ultimately he's going to come back i think he's going to come back quick fairly quickly because a dog needs his owner, and I would need his dog, obviously. And I feel like even though he might be okay up in the mountains, doing hunting, whatever he needs to do, everyone needs a companion. He's going to come back. Yeah, I think. I think so too. I'm curious to see. All right.